While farms are mostly just huge open spaces for crops, you can't deny that weird things happen in them. In fact, you'd be surprised what you can find among the carrots and beets with just a trusty metal detector. From a lost baby seal to all kinds of treasure, here are 20 shocking things farmers discovered in their fields. Bones among the crops We all know that woolly mammoths once roamed the earth a long time ago, but they're definitely not the kind of creature that you'd expect to travel around in Michigan. So, you can imagine the surprise to everyone when their remains were found, especially by the guys who found them. They were found by a pair of farmers, and they'd been working to drain water from their soybean field when they hit what they thought was a piece of wood. But when they dug deeper, they realized they had uncovered something far more interesting and valuable. After contacting the University of Michigan and being put in touch with Professor Dan Fisher, a team of experts and volunteers descended upon the farm to begin the excavation. Using heavy equipment, they worked tirelessly throughout the day to uncover as much of the mammoth's skeleton as possible without interfering in the farmer's work. Hey, why should the crop stop growing just because of a skeleton that's been around for thousands of years? The bones were determined to be those of an adult male mammoth, likely around 40 to 50 years old before it passed. The bones were around 15,000 years old and represented one of the more complete set of woolly mammoth bones ever found in the state. The discovery was also significant because it showed how important it was for researchers and farmers to work together to protect and preserve important archaeological and paleontological sites. Without the farmer's initial discovery and willingness to work with the university, this significant discovery might never have been made and we wouldn't really have much to talk about. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Farmers are known for seeing some crazy things out in their land all the time. That's kind of the whole thing we're getting into here. In fact, one of the biggest issues with farming might even be the number of weird things you get to see while not having anyone nearby to talk about it. In this case, a farmer discovered something terrifying outside his farm fields and managed to get an almost cinematic shot of it. Maybe he was practicing his wilderness photography when he stumbled upon what looks to be a bipedal wolf. Did this oversized dog teach itself to walk? Or is it maybe some other kind of creature with wolf-like features? We want to say that it's a werewolf out in broad daylight. But as all experts of the Monster Mash will tell you, werewolves only appear in the light of the full moon. So what exactly is it that we're looking at? If we can't say for sure, maybe you can figure it out. Write out what you think this farmer found by typing out the hashtag missing topic in the comments. Hopefully, we'll get to the bottom of this mystery instead of just barking up the wrong tree. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? A long way from home. People like to compare cute baby animals all the time. And some might even say that a baby seal is just like a baby kitten or pup in a cute kind of way. But this special seal might be closer to a lost pet. Seeing as how far it traveled away from home, the lonely and confused seal had apparently swam upstream along the River Darwin and ended up more than 15 miles away from its home in the Lancashire village of Walton Liddell. Luckily, a couple of locals, including veterinary nurse Rebecca Adair, spotted the seal and sprang into action to keep it safe. They even used blankets, spare doors, and gates to create a makeshift sail-proof fence. It's not every day you get to see one of those in your office. After a few hours of teamwork, the experts from the British Divers Marine Life Rescue arrived and called for backup to bring boards to herd the little guy into a crate for transport. The seal was then released back into the sea, much to the relief of everyone involved. RSPCA Animal Rescue Officer Kelly Nix said the seal looked healthy and happily swam off into the ocean. So why did the seal venture so far inland? The Angling Trust speculates that the seals might be following food sources. Or maybe this particular seal just felt like taking a break from the hustle and bustle of ocean life and embarking on a countryside adventure. Either way, it's safe to say that this was one confused and determined seal. A Hole in Mexico An absolutely massive sinkhole opened up in a farmer's field in Mexico, and it caused quite an uproar in the community. The sinkhole first measured just 15 feet in diameter, but over the short time span of just 24 hours, the hole grew to a whopping 300 feet in diameter. That's like the size of two and a half football fields if they happen to form a circle and were also in Mexico. 
State officials have said that the hole is also about 50 feet deep and filled with underground water, which sounds kind of like a really deep swimming pool, except much scarier. The sinkhole appeared in the town of Juan C. Bonilla in the state of Puebla, and the family who lived in the nearby house had to be evacuated because the house was teetering on the edge of the hole. Local residents have been warned to stay away from the area, but of course that hasn't stopped onlookers from flocking to the scene. But how exactly did this sinkhole even happen? Some locals believe it's because there used to be a large pond in the area that was covered up for some reason. Others think it might have something to do with the extraction of groundwater and the softening of the farmland. According to the United States Geological Survey, sinkholes happen when the ground can no longer support the land surface above it. Basically, the ground just gives up and collapses in on itself, which is definitely not something you want to happen in your backyard. Let's hope the authorities can figure out what's going on and prevent any more sinkholes from appearing in the future. In the meantime, if you're in the area, it's probably best to stay away from any suspicious-looking holes in the ground. Pot of Gold This lucky farmer was digging away in his own farm when he stumbled upon something completely unexpected and extraordinary. It was a pot filled with five kilograms of gold and silver jewelry. Who knew farming could be so rewarding? But the farmer was not the only one surprised by this discovery. The whole village was amazed and came together to offer prayers at the site, believing that the jewelry belonged to a goddess. If that's the case, how did she lose it in the first place? Without giving many answers, the villagers even cracked open coconuts and burnt incense sticks to show their gratitude. Archaeologists who examined the jewelry believe that it belongs to the Kakatiya era, but they didn't give much insight into the forgetful goddess that can't keep track of her things. After all was said and done, the local district additional collector Basker came to take charge of the treasure under the Indian Treasure Trove Act of 1878. Turns out that the ornaments will be kept with the district treasury where they should be safe and hopefully taken care of so they don't get lost again. But no need to fret, it looks like this farmer hit the jackpot and became an instant celebrity in his village. Some have even labeled him a kind of hero for his great find. Who knows? Maybe it's time for other farmers to start digging in their fields to see what treasures they can find next. A picture worth its weight. Archaeologists have struck gold, or rather mosaic, with the discovery of a Roman villa in England. What began as a pandemic hobby for Jim Irvine, an archaeology enthusiast, quickly turned into a significant find when he and his family stumbled upon some old pottery in one of his father's fields. After informing the local archaeological finds officer in Historic England, Experts from the University of Leicester were brought in to carry out excavations and surveys. To their amazement, they discovered more lavish buildings and another mosaic featuring an intricate geometric pattern. The first artwork was found during a dig in 2021 and depicts scenes from the Trojan War epic, The Iliad, which most of us probably remember from our mandatory school reading. The discovery of the villa has challenged previous beliefs about the area's history as it's now known to be older than previously thought by a hundred years or more. Jennifer Browning, a projects officer with the university, expressed her excitement, saying, It's amazing. It sort of makes up for all the muddy ditches that I've spent a lot of time in. Being able to work on something like this brings you a lot closer to the people that were living here. The discovery of the villa has thrilled archaeological enthusiasts and history buffs, adding to our knowledge and the fascinating Roman period in Britain. Hopefully, there's still more left to find, tangled like a king. Well, if you're ever in the mood for a horror movie plot in real life, our next topic might give you a spook. Rat kings are a phenomenon where a group of rats get their tails entangled together, creating a creepy, wriggling mass of fur and flesh. Now just the mental image alone might sound terrifying, but there's no need to worry. The actual chances of coming across a real rat king is super rare to the point that many don't believe they even exist. Researchers are still trying to figure out why it happens, but haven't come up with some solid evidence just yet. Some theories suggest that it may occur when rats are in close quarters, such as in a nest or in a dumpster, and their tails become tangled through normal activities like grooming or fighting. Or maybe one of them was trying to get their knot tying badge for the rat scouts. But despite the name, rat kings are not actually royalty, but rather a bizarre occurrence in the animal kingdom. In fact, there have been sightings of squirrel kings and mouse kings as well, but their names don't really strike fear and mystique in the same way that rat kings does. While rat kings may be fascinating to some, they can be dangerous to the rats themselves. 
The entanglement can lead to infections, injuries, and even death, and it's believed that most rat kings do not survive for very long. So there you have it, a strange and unusual phenomenon that's both fascinating and a bit creepy. Just be sure to keep an eye out for any wriggling masses of tails if you happen to be near any rat nests. Lost in the Cornfield Did you hear about the time a steamboat got lost in a cornfield? No, it's not the start of a joke. In fact, it's a true story. Back in 1856, the steamboat Arabia was traveling up the Missouri River while carrying 200 tons of cargo. When it hit a tree snag and tragically sank to the depths, fortunately all the passengers and crew survived, but the boat and its precious cargo disappeared beneath the muddy waters. Fast forward to 1988, when five adventurous guys went on a quest to find the lost steamboat and made it back to tell the tale. After using old maps and metal detectors, the group eventually stumbled upon the Arabia's remains, where no one expected, buried 45 feet deep in a Kansas cornfield. The steamboat had been preserved in the stiff and suffocating mud for over a century, and some changed while the cargo that was meant for general stores in the Midwest was still perfectly intact. Among the practical treasures were jars of pickles, olives, and preserved fruit, along with clothing, hardware, tools, and even a 3,000-pound safe. The discovery of the Arabia's cargo was like a time capsule from the mid-19th century, and it gave historians an unprecedented glimpse into everyday life during that time. The items are currently on display at the Arabia Steamboat Museum in Kansas City, Missouri, while visitors can marvel at the incredible preservation of the artifacts. So next time you're eating a pickle or enjoying some fruit preserves, just imagine that it might have come from a sunken steamboat buried in a cornfield. Bigger but not better. Try to picture this. A farmer in Argentina is going about his business, tending to his crops and livestock, when he suddenly stumbles upon a group of massive armadillo-like creatures lurking in a nearby stream. No, it's not the plot of a cheesy sci-fi movie from the 60s, it's a real-life discovery. The farmer had actually discovered the fossilized remains of four glyptodons, which are prehistoric creatures that roamed the Earth around two million years ago. These guys were basically supersized armadillos, with shells that could grow up to 11 feet in length and weigh up to two tons. Talk about heavy armor. Despite their intimidating size, they were herbivores, munching on plants and grass with their massive teeth, and while they might not have been the fastest creatures around, their sturdy shells protected them from predators like saber-toothed cats and dire wolves. But back to our farmer friend, after realizing he had stumbled upon something truly special, he contacted local experts, who carefully excavated the fossils and brought them to a nearby museum for further study. The discovery shed new light on the history of these fascinating creatures and gave scientists a glimpse into the world of prehistoric Argentina. Maybe they'll even find out why our current armadillos are so much smaller. If you ask us, evolution probably decided that being bigger doesn't always work out. The $600 million find in 2018, a farmer in Colombia made a discovery that would change his life forever. As he was tending to his crops, he stumbled upon something unexpected buried in the ground, a stash of cash worth nearly $600 million. But this wasn't just any ordinary cash that happened to be lying around. As it turned out, the money had once belonged to one of the most notorious drug lords in history, Pablo Escobar. According to legend, Escobar had buried his wealth all across Colombia, hiding it in secret locations to keep it safe from the authorities, sort of like a pirate on land rather than the sea. As you might imagine, the discovery made headlines around the world. People were amazed that someone could stumble upon such a massive fortune by sheer chance, but the farmer, being humble, didn't let the money go to his head. Instead, he immediately contacted the authorities to report his find. The Colombian government then launched an investigation and eventually traced the wealth back to Escobar before his fatal shootout with the police in 1993. But despite the incredible amount of money involved, the farmer didn't get to keep a single dollar. Under Colombian law, any cash found on private property is considered the property of the state. Although he admitted that he was just happy to have played a small part in bringing a notorious criminal to justice. As for the money itself, it was eventually seized by the Colombian government and put towards social programs to benefit the country's citizens. At least his discovery ended up doing some good in the world. Treasure Trove of Coins Lawrence Egerton was just your average 51-year-old, semi-retired builder in the UK with a bit of a unique hobby, metal detecting. For years, he dug up little more than rusty pieces of trash. 
but one day everything changed when he found a hoard of more than 22,000 Roman coins. To his surprise, he got a signal, dug a hole, and the coins started spilling off of his shovel. He quickly reported his find to the Devon County Council archaeologist, Bill Horner, and a group of professional archaeologists came to excavate the site. The operation lasted three days, and Lawrence wanted to make sure the coins were safe, so he decided to park his car near the site and sleep there to protect it from potential thieves. In total, they found 22,888 coins and three ingots weighing around 150 pounds. The coins were in good shape, and the rulers and members of the imperial family depicted on them were clearly visible. Some of them were even minted in 332. Despite the hoard's large size, the coins weren't considered very precious when they were in circulation, which might explain why no one came looking for them. They were just everyday coins used for everyday purchases back then. However, after being buried for nearly 1,700 years, the coins are now worth a stunning $100,000. Not too shabby for some coins that were just used to buy bread and wine back in the day. If you want to take a look at these ancient coins, they're on display at the Royal Albert Memorial Museum just a couple of miles from where they were discovered. A Torque of a Find In a real-life version of treasure hunting, two friends named Mark and Joe went on a metal-detecting adventure in the field in the United Kingdom. The two didn't expect to find much, except maybe some old bottle caps and maybe an arrowhead or two, but to their surprise, they stumbled upon a true lost treasure. The Leakfrith Iron Age Torques were considered a special discovery because they were the oldest of their kind ever found in the UK and it was all completely by chance. Now you might be thinking, what's a torque? Well, it's a kind of neck ring that was worn by wealthy and powerful people in ancient times. You've probably seen them before, but never asked for their name, kind of like those things at the end of your shoelaces. Those are called aglets, by the way. But anyhow, let's get back to Mark and Joe. These two amateur treasure hunters couldn't believe their luck. The experts who examined the torques were amazed by their quality and condition. And while the story could have ended there, with Mark and Joe content knowing they had made a significant archaeological discovery, it turns out that they decided to do something even more amazing. They donated their share of the Torx value to the local community, so everyone could have a chance to see them up close. Just goes to show that treasure hunting isn't always about personal gain. Sometimes it's about the thrill of the adventure and sharing the joy and excitement of discovery with others. And that's a real treasure in itself the dig of a century. It isn't exactly uncommon for new finds and discoveries to be made in Egypt, but that doesn't stop them from being exciting, especially with this one farmer who stumbled upon a rock that turned out to be a 2,600-year-old standing stone or stella created by the pharaoh Apries. This discovery has archaeologists in a hieroglyphic frenzy as they work to translate the slab's 15 lines of mysterious text. The farmer reportedly thought he had just found a very large, very old paperweight, but after reporting it to the government authorities, it features a carving of a winged sun disk and a cartouche, which is basically an oval of fancy Egyptian hieroglyphs representing Apries. The slab is believed to be connected to a military campaign that Apries was waging east of Egypt, although whether it was against Jerusalem or a separate civil war in Egypt remains unclear. One thing's for sure, if the pharaoh had only known that thousands of years later his exploits would be unearthed by a farmer with a shovel, he probably would have taken better notes. Overall, this discovery is a reminder that even when you're just going about your daily life, you never know what ancient treasure might be hiding in your fields. So next time you're out gardening or planting crops, keep an eye out for anything that looks like it might be older than your great-grandma's favorite sweater. Who knows, you might just strike archaeological gold. Three of a kind. Treasure hunting might not sound like a real career path to some, but for the hunter in Cumbria who stumbled on a Roman bronze helmet complete with a face mask, it can definitely have its payoff. This fancy helmet is even believed to be one of only three of its kind in Britain. The helmet has virtually intact features, and it's believed that Roman soldiers would wear them with colorful steamers attached as a mark of excellence during cavalry sports parades. Can you imagine how stylish those parades must have been? At the very least, they were definitely colorful. This amazing discovery was expected to fetch an impressive 300,000 euros, or roughly over $373,000, at Christie's Antiquities Auction in London. The helmet is believed to have been from the 1st or 2nd century AD and has been officially named the Crosby Garrett Helmet 
after the hamlet in Cumbria where it was found. The helmet's griffin crest has never been seen before, but it would have been a gold and bronze color back in its prime. Christie's is really excited about this discovery and has described it as an extraordinary example of Roman metalwork at its zenith. The other two helmets with face masks that were found are the Ribchester helmet, held in the British Museum and discovered in 1796, and the Newstead helmet, found sometime around 1905 and sitting at the Museum of Antiquities in Edinburgh. Overall, it's kind of amazing that a simple metal detector enthusiast found such a significant piece of history. It goes to show that there's always something out there to find when you least expect it. Turkey's Roman Mosaic Better hold on to your togas because we're taking another look at a discovery from ancient Rome. In what can only be described as a stroke of luck, a University of Nebraska art historian stumbled upon an astonishing discovery while walking through a farmer's field in southern Turkey. Michael Hoff was bowled over by the sheer size of the mosaic he found, which he estimates to be about 1,600 square feet or around the size of a modest family home. The mosaic is believed to have once decorated the floor of a bath complex and borders around a 25-foot-long pool that would have been open to the air. The discovery, which dates back to the 3rd or 4th century, provides insight into the influence of the Roman Empire at its peak. Hoff explained that the existence of the mosaic suggests that the ancient city where it was found was far more influenced by the Romans than previously believed. It's the largest Roman mosaic ever found in southern Turkey, which might be more surprising if you're not familiar with ancient history and geography. This discovery has shed new light on the reach of the Roman Empire at its height, and it's all thanks to a lucky find by a classics professor over a decade ago. It's also a reminder of the power of chance encounters and being in the right place at the right time. Who knows what other amazing discoveries might be waiting for us if we only take the time to explore and uncover the world around us. Only time will tell. A statue of mud. Can you guess what was found buried in a farmer's field in the Gaza Strip? No, not treasure or gold coins this time but something even more fascinating, a 4,500-year-old statue of the Canaanite goddess of beauty, love and war, Annette. Bet you didn't guess that. The discovery was made by another farmer, Nadal Abu Aid, who came across the nine-inch limestone carving while cultivating his field in Khan Yunus. Can you imagine finding a precious piece of history just lying there in the mud? Apparently, the statue had to be washed before they could see its true beauty without all the wet dirt. After an analysis, experts say that this statue is a reminder of how the Gaza Strip was originally a Canaanite settlement and an important trade route for successive ancient civilizations. At a press conference, Jamal Abu Rida of the Hamas-run Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities unveiled the artifact, saying it made a political point. He claimed that such discoveries proved that Palestine had a civilization in history, which no one could deny or falsify. Well, not all archaeological finds in Gaza have fared so well. Hamas, the militant organization that governs the region, has previously been accused of destroying ancient sites. However, this year, they reopened the remains of a 5th century Byzantine church after foreign donors helped pay for a years-long restoration project. Although the Gaza Strip has virtually no tourism industry, perhaps these ancient sites could become a draw for foreign visitors. If things work out, maybe one day you'll be able to go to Gaza and see Anat's statue for yourself. Silver and Gold Galore The Staffordshire Hoard is a collection of over 3,500 items of Anglo-Saxon gold and silver, as well as precious gemstones found buried in a field in Staffordshire, England in 2009. The discovery caused a stir in the archaeological world, as it was the largest find of Anglo-Saxon gold and silver ever discovered. The items were likely buried in the 7th or 8th century, during a period of turmoil in England, as the Anglo-Saxons fought off invasions from the Vikings. The hoard was found by a metal detectorist named Terry Herbert, who was exploring a field near the village of Hamrick. The items in the hoard are believed to have been stripped from weapons and armor and include sword pommels, helmet parts, and other decorative elements. Many of the items are intricately decorated with geometric patterns and animal designs, and some are inlaid with precious stones such as garnets. The discovery of the Staffordshire hoard has shed new light on the art and culture of the Anglo-Saxons, who are often portrayed as barbaric raiders in popular culture. 
Today, the items from the hoard are on display at the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery and the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery in Stoke-on-Trent. The Safest Secret While most of us like to try and solve our mysteries, it seems like some people prefer to keep the best questions going for as long as possible. In this case, there's a locked mystery safe and no one knows what's inside. The massive safe was found in a farmer's field in New York State after randomly appearing with a note attached that read, if you can open this, you can have what's inside. Sounds like a challenge. But when the farmer called the cops, they found a bunch of people trying to smash it open with a sledgehammer. The safe is estimated to weigh between five to 600 pounds, so it'll take a mighty blow to get through that defense. The people trying to crack it open didn't get very far, and the farmer moved the safe to a secret location to keep it, well, safe. The farmer, Kirk Maids, thinks it's more fun to leave it a mystery for now. He said, if you open it, the show is over. In these times, with the virus and the politics, it might get people a chance to set their problems or troubles aside and have a lot of fun talking about it. To his credit, it is a nice distraction from all the craziness going on in the world. Just wondering if the safe could be holding millions of dollars or maybe just an IOU sheet of paper will probably be keeping us up all night with wonder. But locals are excited about the possibility, and some groups are even planning to include the safe in a local history museum. So, for now, let's just dream about what could be inside. Maybe it's a secret treasure map or a bunch of kittens wearing tiny hats. The possibilities are endless. A ring in the rough. A metal detectorist in Somerset, England discovered a rare and valuable Roman gold ring in a field. The ring, which dates back to the 4th or 5th century AD, features an image of the god Mercury and is believed to have been owned by a high-ranking official or a wealthy person. It was found by Jason Macy, a metal detectorist from Berman-on-the-Sea who was searching the field with his girlfriend when he made the discovery. In a statement, he said, I'd only been detecting for 20 minutes when I found it. I was really excited when I realized what it could be. The ring is believed to have been lost by its owner around 1,500 years ago and was likely buried in the field where it was found. Experts say it's a remarkable find and provides important new insights into Roman life in Somerset. The ring was declared a treasure by the local authorities, and Macy and the landowner will share any proceeds from its sale. It's amazing to think that something so valuable and historic could be lying just beneath the surface of the field, waiting to be discovered by someone with a metal detector. But this story seems far from uncommon. If we all grab some metal detectors right now, it seems like it's only a matter of time before we strike it big. The Irish Tomb a new ancient tomb has been discovered in Ireland, and while we don't know exactly how old it is, experts think it could date all the way back to the Bronze Age from around 2500 BC. We're talking about a tomb that's potentially older than Stonehenge and the oldest pyramids in Egypt. It was discovered when a mechanical digger overturned a large stone slab above it, revealing a chamber beneath to everyone's surprise. Archaeologists from the National Monument Service in Ireland's National Museum were promptly notified and have inspected the site, but the exact location is being kept secret to protect the tomb from disturbance or looting. One of the most interesting finds in the tomb is a polished stone with a roughly oval shape. We don't know what it was used for, but it was buried alongside human remains. The archaeologists removed it for safekeeping, so hopefully they can figure out all of that. While the tomb itself is exciting enough, what really sets it apart is its unique design. Maybe it was owned by a particularly stylish Bronze Age leader. In any case, this discovery just goes to show that there's still so much we don't know about our ancient past. A gift from space. For 40 years, Professor Calvin Alexander has been contacted by people who think they found meteorites, right? And come into his lab with all sorts of rocks and that they hope are from outer space. Sadly, most of these turn out to be standard earth stones. However, Things took a meteoric turn when farmers Bruce and Nelva Lindenhall contacted Professor Alexander about a peculiar stone they'd found in their cornfield. The rock was about 16 inches by 12 inches and weighed 33 pounds, which is about three times denser than any regular earth rock of that size. Professor Alexander confirmed their suspicions after analyzing a small piece of the rock which contained about 8% nickel, a telltale sign of a meteorite. This was the first real meteorite that the professor had seen in 40 years. 
and to say he was excited is an understatement. The couple was also thrilled with their find. They had come across the rock while clearing their field and thought it was interesting but didn't know just how valuable it really was. Now it's become a prized possession. The couple legally owns it since it fell on their property and they may decide to keep it or sell it. However, Professor Alexander would love to study the rock in detail and compare it to a meteorite found in nearby fields in 1894, which has a similar shape and nickel content. The couple believe that there could be more fragments of the same meteorite out there and their annual rock picking up duty has become even more exciting. Hopefully this inspired some of you out there to give treasure hunting a go. If not, you could always try working on a farm until you find something amazing right below your feet. It's impossible to say what unknown discoveries people might uncover next, but as long as we keep an eye out, 